Hi, Chris, Jump in the Cup, Moto Legends. Recently I did a video about motorcycle jackets, how to choose the most appropriate motorcycle jacket for your kind of riding. And as part of that review, I talked about mesh jackets. And it may be that I came across as a little bit dismissive about mesh as a genre. That wasn't really my intention, but I still take the view that for most bikers who are riding only here in the UK, a mesh jacket is not particularly necessary. It would be a bit of an indulgence. I, for example, have been riding for over 30 years and never in the UK have I felt a need to wear a mesh jacket. Now, that may be just me. I'm, I don't like riding in the cold. I don't like getting cold. And I'm always mindful about how a mesh jacket, once the sun has gone out of the sky, it can just be very cold because the cold air, the wind chill effect, there's nothing to get in the way of that wind. You're going to get very cold in a mesh jacket. The truth is that mesh jackets were never designed for climates like ours. They were designed for countries that have hotter weather than ours. The principle of a mesh jacket, however, is pretty straightforward. Traditionally, you would have a pretty lightweight nylon chassis that holds the jacket together, and then you would have panels, mesh panels, around the jacket. So normally you would have some on the chest here, you might have some mesh panels up the arms, and sometimes something, sometimes panels up the back as well. What that means is that mesh jackets are particularly well vented and particularly breathable. Now, by venting what we mean is that the cool air that's coming on towards you can reach the body, that can cool the body down. So a mesh jacket is going to vent very well, but it will also breathe well. And what we mean by breathing or breathability is that the skin can breathe, that we can sweat. So when we're hot, which is when you're going to be wearing a jacket like this, we sweat. That sweat goes from a liquid state to a vapor state. And when it does that, that draws heat because it requires energy that draws heat out of the body. So we need to be able to sweat effectively to cool ourselves down. And with all those mesh panels around a jacket, that sweat's going to be able to escape very easily. So a mesh jacket is particularly good at helping the body cool itself down. Historically, however, we have had, or I have had some concerns about the protective qualities of mesh jackets. I think less so now since the new standard EN17092 has come into play. We now know that there is a minimum standard. You won't find many mesh jackets exceeding that basic A standard, but before the standard came in, I think some mesh jackets were very poorly put together. And my fear was always that if you ever hit the deck, they would just sort of fall apart. So not so much the case these days, but it still has to be acknowledged that a mesh jacket is not going to be at the forefront or at the pinnacle when it comes to its protective qualities. And if I knew I was going to come off on the motorway tomorrow at 70 miles an hour, the last thing I would want to be wearing, frankly, is a mesh jacket. So where do we stand on mesh? Well, they perform a function. And as long as you can accept that it performs that function within fairly narrow parameters, we have no problem with mesh jackets. So what we're going to go on and do now, we're going to look at five of the mesh jackets we offer and we'll compare and contrast and come up with some views. This is the Mistral Evo 2 mesh jacket from the French brand Furigan. And in many ways, it is the epitome of the traditional classic mesh jacket. And $129.99, it is in our world cheap as chips. Although the last time that I used that phrase in a video, one of our customers wrote to us pointing out that chips around here are clearly more expensive than they are where he comes from. But the fact is, this jacket sits at the lower end of the price spectrum in terms of mesh jackets. It's a very simple jacket. You've got a nylon mesh. So the chassis of the jacket, the part of the jacket that holds all the panels together will be a very basic nylon. You've then got panels, in this case, up the arms, in the chest, and on the, this particular jacket, you've got them up the back as well. So the jacket is fairly generously supplied with mesh panels. You've got loads of adjusters. You've got adjusters here at the end of the sleeves. You've got adjusters on the biceps to adjust the volume on the arms. You've also got some adjusters on the waist to kind of cinch the waistline in a wee bit. You've got two outside pockets, two inside. One of the slightly unusual things or something that we quite like, wouldn't necessarily expect on a jacket like this, but we've got a lowered back so that that will go over the jean line if you're riding in a pair of jeans. Jacket comes supplied with D3O armor, a standard in the shoulders and the elbows. But we can only work with D3O, so that's absolutely what we would expect. There's a pocket in the back for a back protector, doesn't come as standard. So as I've said, this is a pretty basic jacket. It is lightweight, it's going to help you stay cool. It's got no real bells and whistles. It is 
ironically in our view, prepared for an airbag vest. Now, that's again a bit of a furrigan thing, but for us, an airbag vest combined with a mesh jacket, that just makes no sense at all. If you are really bothered about safety, you don't buy a mesh jacket. If you really want to stay cool, which is why you wear a mesh jacket in the first place, the last thing you want anywhere near you is an airbag vest. This jacket is called the Modelo and it's from the stylish French brand Helston's. We see it as a slight step up from the fur again. It's still a traditional jacket in terms of its construction, but it doesn't shout mesh in the way that the fur again jacket does. So from more than 10 meters, this just looks like a standard motorcycle jacket. It's like the fur again, it's got to be said in many ways, but it's a more substantial jacket. The mesh is thicker and stronger. And on this jacket, there's a mesh on the inside and then another layer on the outside. So it's a double mesh lining. You've actually got an anti-abrasion lining in between. That's going to, I think, potentially impede the flow of air a little bit. I think this is still going to be a very breathable jacket, but it's just, it makes for a more substantial jacket. But like the Furigan, you've got the nylon chassis. It's a much heavier nylon, so again, more abrasion resistant. In terms of facilities, you've got four external pockets, two up here, two down here. You've got three on the inside. You've got adjusters, zip and adjusters on the cuff, and also on the hem. In terms of armour, it comes not with D3O, it comes with a continental form or continental version of D3O, so it's still a very soft armour, but it comes as standard in the elbows and the shoulders. But like many Helston's jackets, this also comes with a back protector. So we like the Modelo. If we were going for this kind of jacket, I think we would be tempted to go for the Modelo rather than the Furigan. The Furigan just feels a little bit skimpy as though it was designed to hit a price point. The Hilsons doesn't to anywhere near the same degree. And if we were being rude, and let's face it, we're often rude, we would say that the Furigan shouts scooter, this shouts motorcycle. You're gonna pay a little bit more for the extra heft of this jacket. In the margin, does it flow less air? Maybe a little bit less, but the trade-off is going to be a greater level of protection. This jacket is undoubtedly a more protective jacket than the Furigan version. Priced at $149.99, so we think that's still not expensive for a jacket that a jacket like this that comes fully armoured, and we think it's well worth the extra £20 that you would pay over the fur again, especially when, after all, you're already getting back protector as standard. This is the Temple jacket from the British brand Bellstar. It would seem that you can't really have a conversation about Bellstar or talk about Bellstar without the subject of pricing coming up. And that's because most people, when you mention the name Bellstar, imagine that prices are going to be through the roof. And in truth, you're not necessarily going to be wrong. For example, this jacket, the Temple, costs £275. And even we think for a basic mesh jacket, and this is functionally in the way it's put together, this is very much a basic jacket. Even we think £275 is a lot of money to pay. But it's often said that you simply cannot put the words Bellstar and value in the same sentence. Nobody buys Bellstaff because it's cheap or because it represents great value. Bellstaff represents, it is the epitome of motorcycle chic. It just doesn't get in this particular world, in the motorcycle world, it doesn't get cooler, it doesn't get more stylish than Bellstaff. Now, some people hate Bellstaff because they perceive it as being overpriced for not offering anywhere near as much functionality for the money as other brands. But what you have to understand is, Almost that exclusivity, the fact that not everybody wants Bellstaff, perhaps not everybody can afford Bellstaff, it's that that partly makes Bellstaff attractive to some people. What I think is beyond doubt is that Bellstaff do make some very special guide gear. Their designers just have a better eye. They use more exotic materials. Their cut is nicer. Their stuff is always beautiful to wear. There are many people copy Bellstaff, but it sounds easy. It sounds though like anyone should be able to do it, but whenever one Whenever anyone tries to copy Bellstaff, they don't quite get it right. A Bellstaff lookalike doesn't feel, doesn't wear like a Bellstaff. And in that respect, the temple is exquisitely styled. We've got the same patch pockets up here that you get on the Mojave. We've got an extra two pockets down here. But just looking at this jacket, it doesn't look like a mess jacket. It just looks like a, a very stylish, lightweight jacket. In addition, on the pockets, you've got another one on the inside. You've got poppers here on the sleeves, poppers at the side of the waist to cinch the waist in a wee bit. Thoughtfully, they're covered with rubber, so there's no chance that you're going to scratch the tank of your bike. You've got zips by YKK, 
Bill Self, don't work with anyone else. But actually, on that subject of not working with other people, what is really annoying us at present about Bell Stuff is their propensity to cut corners to cheap out where they can. And we just don't find that acceptable when you are pricing your gear at a premium level. In this particular case, we're thinking about the armor. Now, D3O would be the armor of choice for a jacket like this. Bell Staff work with D3O, so we cannot understand why they wouldn't have put the latest ghost armor in this. Ghost armor gets a little bit lost if you've got a heavy leather jacket, but if you've got a lightweight jacket, you can feel the armor. And to put ghost in a lightweight jacket is just the way forward. But instead of doing that, they put this rather nasty, rather cheap, very ordinary armor in, and it just doesn't belong in a jacket like this. So that's upsetting, but anyway, I'll try and get over it. In terms of what this jacket does, I think it's gonna be less breathable to a degree than some of those other jackets we've looked at, so namely the Helstons and the Furigan. We've just got some mesh panels up here, but it's a very lightweight jacket. Air is still gonna pass through this. It's gonna be a very easy jacket to wear. It's gonna be very smart off the bike. So I think that if I was living in London, I spent a lot of times touring around the streets of London and I wanted to stay cool, but I wanted also to be able to get off the bike and go into a restaurant or a cafe and look the part. This is the jacket I would want to wear. Price be damned. A couple of years ago, the Finnish brand Rucker came out with a new mesh jacket called the Force Air. This jacket, the Force Air Pro, is basically an evolution of that jacket. Same in terms of concept, but a slightly nicer fit. Now, when Rucker first bought out that jacket, the Force Air, it marked a significant step up in terms of mesh technology for a number of reasons. But at the heart of that and the heart of this jacket is the fact that it's made from a material called Cordura AFT. AFT standing for Airflow Technology. The material, the base material that forms this, or the base Cordura that forms this material is a 650 denier Cordura. That's a perfectly respectable weight of yarn. There are many motorcycle jackets out on the market that are made from 500 denier Cordura, 400 denier Cordura. So this starts off from a strong point it is a strong material. But the secret with AFT Cordura is that it's knitted rather than being woven. I don't know of any other motorcycle jacket that is not woven, that's the way most garments are put together. But when you knit the Cordura, you create more spaces between the yarn, as it were. So this jacket flows much more air than most garments. And in fact, Rucker say that almost twice as much air will flow through this jacket than would be the case were it woven. Yet the knitting doesn't in any way or significantly reduce the strength of the jacket. So the secret of the Force Air Pro is that this garment is 100% made from Cordura AFT. Every single panel of this jacket flows air. So we were talking about how on a traditional mesh jacket, you've got panels here, maybe on the chest, sometimes up the side, sometimes in the back, sometimes down the arms. But this jacket, the whole jacket is made from Cordura AFT. So every single panel flows air. The only area that flows less air perhaps is here on the elbows, here on the shoulders. There's a double layer of Cordura AFT for extra protection. So that's gonna impede, impede the flow of air a little bit, but the basic principle is the same. There is no jacket on the market that's gonna flow anywhere near as much jacket, as much air, excuse me, as this jacket. Yet, at the same time, this is so much stronger than traditional mesh. Already voiced our concerns about the weakness of traditional mesh jackets, but this is a strong material. We've seen the results of accidents that have been had by our customers in these jackets, and they have stood up incredibly well. It's a very impressive jacket from a protection standpoint. In terms of impact protectors, you've got D3O armor in the elbows and the shoulders. It's D3O armor, as you might expect. It's level two armor, and it's the aerated armor, so air passes through it. There's a, po a pocket at the back of the jacket that's going to take a D3O protector, doesn't come as standard. Looking at some of the features, we've got zip pockets here. We've got Velcro adjuster at the waist. We don't have adjusters at the sleeve other than zips. Because this jacket is going to be completely useless as far as waterproofing is concerned, in one of the pockets you've got a waterproof uh, pouch into which you might put something like a phone if you're riding and obviously it's raining. You get a crotch strap that comes underneath the jacket and connects under here. If you're someone who wants to be, or if you're someone who's a little cautious, you want to avoid a situation where if you come off the jacket rides up, that crotch strap will make sure the jacket cannot move. Because this is a rucker, it also interestingly comes with a full length zip. 
And that's interesting because this jacket, we sell a lot of these jackets to the guys who ride from here, Guildford or south of Guildford, all the way into the city or the West End every day. They will have often a rucker suit for the winter to keep them warm and dry. But on those days when the temperatures are in the upper 20s, it can be unbearably hot if you're commuting through the center of London. So what those guys do, they will swap their laminated jacket for one of these on those hot days, but they still like the security of zipping in. So they just put this jacket on, zip it in in the normal manner. They're gonna be much cooler, but obviously if they come off um, on the A3 as they're doing 70 miles an hour, this jacket's gonna stay in place. The fact that this jacket will zip into a rocker trouser means coincidentally that it's going to zip also into any Hal Varsen's trouser. But interestingly, if you acquire one of these, buy one of these. This is called the waist zip. It comes from Hal Varsens. It's a 20 pound item. You weave that in and out of your belt loops on your jean. And what it means is that if you wander in the summer wear a mesh jacket and a pair of jeans and a pair of jeans, a pair of single layer jeans is a lovely thing to wear in the summer. You can be connected again for that extra level of security. Bottom line here that, though is that the Forsair Pro jacket is in a different league to any other mesh jacket on the market. It's going to flow more air than any mesh jacket. It's going to be more abrasion resistant than any mesh jacket we've come across. The exception to this is going to be perhaps the next jacket that I talk about. This jacket's also got better armor than any other mesh jacket or any traditional mesh jacket. As a rucker item, you might think, well, that's not going to be inexpensive. And you wouldn't be wrong. At £399, it is not inexpensive. But do not get the Forsair Pro confused with a standard mesh jacket. There's a reason why our high mileage commuters will only wear one of these. On a summer day, it's going to flow huge amounts of air, but wherever you ride in one of these, you're going to know that you're properly protected. It is a mesh jacket, it has to be said, but not Jim as we know it. This is the Marrakesh mesh jacket from the American adventure brand Klim. And it is a variation on a theme. That theme having first been composed by Rucker with their Force Air jacket. Like the Force Air, every panel of this jacket flows air. It is made entirely of a mesh panel. The chassis in this jacket, however, is made from a thousand denier Cordura, whereas the Force Air was made from a 650 denier. So we were talking about how impressive it is, how strong the rucker jacket is, but this jacket one has to assume is going to be even stronger because it's a thousand denier Cordura. The material is then infused with elastane for four way stretch. So on one level, we would contend that this jacket is stronger and more protected from an abrasion standpoint than the rucker. And even though the rucker is in no way uncomfortable, this jacket's even more comfortable. Our view is that this is probably the most comfortable motorcycle jacket you will ever ride in. Not suggesting that you could ride in all conditions in this jacket, but we're gonna come back and talk about that later. But as a jacket on a warm day, this is just a beautiful thing to ride in. In the margin, it would have to be acknowledged that the rucker still flows more air because the material in the rucker, that Cordura AFT, that was knitted rather than woven. So. This is loosely woven, but the rucker, I think, would flow more air. But if we counter that, I think this is going to be probably the second most air flowing jacket on the market. But in comparison with the rucker, this is more stylish. I think it's more comfortable. And from an abrasion perspective, it is more protective. If we look at some of the details, we've got four pockets on the outside, two here, two here. We've got adjusters here on the forearms with zips to enable you to get your gloves in and out. The jacket actually has a waterproof coating and Klim make a big deal of this. I personally wouldn't take that too seriously. It'll just be a DWR, it'll be a coating that's gonna wash off over time. And in a jacket that is loosely woven to allow air to flow through it, such a jacket cannot be particularly waterproof. So I would not take the waterproof claim about this jacket too seriously. Might give you 20 minutes, maximum half an hour in the rain before you started to feel wet but you're gonna to have to renew that coating every time you wash it. So you would wash it and reproof it. You're gonna get a little bit of water protection, but not to any great extent. You've got some black scotch white material here. You've got a little bit on the back of the jacket as well. So it gives you a bit of visibility at night. In terms of impact protectors, we've got a full suite of D3O armor in this jacket. Whereas on the rucker, we only had it in the elbows and the shoulders. On the Klim, we've got it in the elbows, the shoulders and the back. It is vented D3O, so 
the same as Rucker in that respect. But in this jacket, it is level one, whereas in the Rucker, it's level two. I think where the Marrakesh differs, it's a, almost a philosophy difference. Klim comes from an off-road adventure world, so this jacket has been designed for wearing off-road. However, we've developed a real liking for this jacket for wearing on-road, and I'm going to come back and talk about that because wherever it came from, and you can tell it's a bit more off-roady, it sits a little bit longer than any of the other jackets, so that's definitely where it's come from, but it still makes for a lovely road riding jacket. That stretch, though, is going to make it a lovely thing to wear when you are off-road and you need to move about. There's no movement that's going to be restrictive in a jacket like this. The only thing that we think is missing from this jacket is that it doesn't come with a connecting zip. We have asked Klim to address that and hopefully next year if they're going to be working on this they will they will do that. We often add a connecting zip in here. We have our people can put a connecting zip that will enable us to connect this jacket to any rucker pant, to any Helvarsons pant, but also using that waist zip. You can wear this with a pair of jeans, which as we've mentioned with the rucker is a lovely way to ride on in hot weather. You've got this on top, you've got a pair of single layer, layer jeans beneath. It's gonna be about the coolest way you can ride. In terms of price, this jacket costs 370 pounds. Now that's pretty close to the Force Air, but the Force Air doesn't come with a back protector. If you added a back protector, you're gonna be a hundred pounds more expensive than this. But the other thing that you then have to bear in mind is you will have a suite of level two armor. This will still have a suite of level one armor. If you wanted to upgrade this to level two, it would make it a little bit less comfortable. But if you wanted to go that route, then I think you're gonna be talking about the same amount of money for both jackets. So on a parry pursuit basis, the jackets are gonna be pretty similar. What we really like about this jacket is, or one of the ways we like to wear this jacket is, we've developed a system, a four part system. And this is our favorite base garment for that four part system. That means that you can wear a Marrakesh in pretty much any condition, in any weather condition, anywhere around the world. So what we do, this jacket flows a lot of air. So it's gonna be great in hot weather. So in the hottest conditions, you're just gonna wear this and a very thin base layer. When it's colder, we would put something like the latest Klim Maverick underneath it, which is a downed jacket, a little bit like the Rucker Down X. So that's gonna make it a lot warmer. If it's really cold, we would put on the Klim windproof base layer underneath that. That's called the Zephyr. So we can have this jacket. It's gonna be fantastic in the hot weather. If it's cold, a combination of the Zephyr and the Maverick will make this as warm as any jacket on the market. If it then rains, we take a Scott waterproof and put that over the top. And with those four elements, the Marrakesh, the Maverick, the Zephyr and the Scott, you have a combination of garments that will look after you in absolutely any condition you might consider riding in. Obviously, you've got the faff of having to stop and put one layer on and take another off, but no jacket on the market, however much you spend, Rucker, Stadler, Halvarsons, no jacket's gonna be perfect in all conditions, but the system we're talking about here will give you a solution that is or can be made perfect in just about every condition. It's not gonna be a cheap solution. You put all of those items together and you're up to almost 800 pounds, but by the same token, you could spend more than that on just a jacket from Rucker. So, whereas this is a mesh jacket, it starts off as a mesh jacket, we like it so much that we found this way of making it adaptable, versatile to be used in any condition. Maybe coming across that we really like this jacket and I've got to say, we love it. So there you have it. That's our take on five quite different mesh jackets. There are clearly loads more mesh jackets on the market, but I suppose I believe that the jackets that we've looked at are fairly representative of what's out there. So we started with the Furigan Mistral Evo 2. It's a typical mesh jacket. It's a very basic garment. It does a job and it is not expensive. The Hilsons Modelo, in our view, was a step up. It's the same concept in terms of a nylon chassis with mesh panels but it's a step up, it's a stronger, more protective jacket. We think it looks better, comes with a back protector as well. The Temple is a different kind of mesh jacket. It combines Bell Staff style with a reasonable amount of airflow. It's not an inexpensive jacket, but it's a jacket that's gonna keep you cool in both senses of the word. The Rucker Force Air Pro, when it first came out, or 
it was the Force Air when it first came out that raised the bar. The Rucker Force Air still flows more air than any jacket on the market. It's a strong, very protective jacket, and it's not by accident that it's the commuter's favorite. The Klim Marrakesh, finally, it's a revelation. It is so nice to wear. It is so nice to ride in. The Rucker may flow a little bit more air, but in other respects, we would suggest that it is trumped by the Klim. When we're going somewhere hot, the Marrakesh is the jacket that we choose. And as a base garment for our four part system, we think it's the perfect starting point. So much as we try to be objective when we do these reviews, we find it quite difficult in this particular instance. We love the Marrakesh. We simply think it's brilliant. If you'd like to see our entire collection of mess jackets, then visit the website motorlegends.com. If you'd like to learn more about the five that we've been talking about today, Graham has put a page together of those. So if you click on one of the links on screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you to those five particular mesh jackets. Now, once you're there, you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail. You can check availability. And obviously if you wanna buy one of those jackets, you can do that there and then. When you do buy from us, we try to make the process simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return some, something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis was rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find one of our competitors selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. There are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you aren't going to price beat us, we suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. In the future, if you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up, click on there, within seconds you'll be in business, in future you'll receive our bulletins. If however you prefer to get your information video graphically, that is to say in this form, we would be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now this is 2021. Last year, 2020, we gave away to one of our YouTube subscribers a Mutt 125cc machine. We had messed about with it, made it look a little bit like a Steve McQueen scrambler. This year, we've gone a little bit more upmarket. We're gonna be giving away a 250cc Fantic Cavalero scrambler, but we are not gonna be giving it away to somebody who follows us on YouTube. We're gonna be giving it to somebody who follows us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning this bike, and we're gonna be giving it away just before Christmas this year, then go over to Facebook and obviously follow us. I'd like to finish with a little play for our fabulous shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the center of Guildford, a mile from the railway station, and the shop is small. It's got a small footprint, but it's attached to a warehouse where we've got more than two million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. That technically means that this is the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK but we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service, we're all about personal fitting. If you wanna check us out, visit Trustpilot. We've got the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.